I'm really happy to be able to talk to you uh, with Mosh Pit Nation. I'm Chantel, by the way. I just know you nice from social you. media. Uh, nice to meet you, Francesca. <laughs> I'm saying that right, Francesca, correct? Yes, that is correct. Perfect. All right. Uh, so I understand that you have this band that you created that you are the front woman for called Fate Destroyed. You guys just released yeah. a song, uh, This Crown, like a month ago. You guys are working on a video for that. Um, and then I know you just released a new single, The Need We Kill For, on March 10th. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So um, uh, where to start? So the band I started in 2016, uh, basically I made most of my rounds as a bass player. And then I sort of realized that there was like, I don't want to say glass ceiling, but there definitely was like a limit to the opportunities that I could get to. Um, unfortunately, kind of like based on the fact that I was a chick, it felt like. And I know that's really horrible to say, but there were times where I would like go to auditions and I would literally have people say like, you're a great player, but you know, there's like reservations about taking a woman on the road because we're all men, and, you know, our girlfriends and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I noticed that the bigger the opportunities got, like the harder it was to kind of be taken seriously. So I had been singing my whole life and I was like, well, you know what? Like maybe I can actually do something with this. So in 2016, I wrote, uh, the two our two debut songs which was uh, Break Free and We Fall and um, I had the first uh, the uh, my friend Carlton Box who's in Orgy and Desi and all that he produced it for me and then um, we shot a music video and that was my proof of concept so basically I used that to shop around and say look like I'm serious about what I'm doing I'm willing to put in the money and the effort and time to have like a real professional band do you want to be my band um, and that actually worked. So then we got a really great lineup and we started writing music together, which is amazing because the music I wrote by myself is really not that great. So <laughs> it's nice to have other people there. So the two songs, so we've kind of been playing around, obviously, um, mostly around Los Angeles. That's where we're from. And then we spent, right before COVID, we were about to drop an album in August of 2019 or 2020. I'm losing track of years now. They're all like blended together. I guess it was 2020. Um, and obviously that didn't happen because we realized that we couldn't tour to support the album because everything was closed. There was absolutely, it was 2019. There was like complete uncertainty about when things would reopen, when festivals would happen. So we kind of just held off on it and reworked some of the songs. And um, we're finally going to put it out this year. So the need that we kill for in this crown are the two singles off of that album uh, that we're going to put out before we drop the album. And I think the album is going to, well, the album's going to drop in summer this year, probably in the next like, two months, um, which is exciting. And the name of that album is called Within These Walls. Um, and then we're kind of like making a complete switch in our sound, which is weird. Uh, we're still going to be absolutely metal because that's what I love. Um, but we're incorporating some new elements and different stuff. And I think we're like really trying to, I think the first album is definitely kind of an adolescent growing stage where we're like trying to discover our sound and get our lineup correct and like figure out what works for us and how best to like navigate because uh, navigate the music writing process I feel like a lot of times when um, you're first starting out that you kind of emulate what's around you and what's popular and what you're inspired by and then eventually once you get comfortable you can start to innovate and I think that the album is definitely our growing years and the EP that we're going to put out later this year is like our first stand of like this is who we are we're like ready to blow some doors off of stuff so ready to blow some minds <laughs> <laughs> You guys are phenomenal, actually. I've been listening to you guys uh, for actually a couple months now, to be perfectly honest. Uh, you guys are fantastic. Uh, helping you get through some of the breakups and, you know, it's just, I just kind of feel like that you just kind of feel what you're writing. And I know that this past year has been kind of crazy for everybody. I want to talk a little bit more about that in quarantine. What was that like? Because I know that you've been doing a lot. You've been very active with modeling, uh, writing, and things like that. It seems like you're always busy. So, I mean, if you want to talk a little bit about that, I know that you probably haven't seen your band members too much this past year. I got to see them for the first time in a year last week. It was amazing. I wanted to cry. Like, I can't even explain it. So, so much of the artistic process is being in the same room with people. You know, when you're grinding 24-7, it's so hard to keep that inspiration when like you don't have the shows to remind you what it feels like to be on stage and like hear people singing your words back to you or like what it rem what it feels like to go out to dinner with your bandmates and, like oh I have this idea for this riff and oh like let's do this and so I will fully admit the first part of quarantine because we didn't know how long it was going to last we didn't do anything like we were in the beginning of 2019 pretty much most of 2019 we didn't do anything because we were just waiting for 
things will open up soon, things will open up soon. And there was so much uncertainty about when they would open up. Um, and I also was going through like a really bad breakup. So I oh, unfortunately yeah. kind of took a step back from the things that were important to me. And then, you know, eventually once we realized like, okay, so this isn't going to go away. And like, we have to figure out what to do to like adapt and amend to that. Um, all I've been doing is trying to stay busy. <laughs> So uh, that requires a lot of writing and writing virtually is so much longer because instead of like us sitting in a room together and somebody playing a riff and me being like, Oh, I had this vocal idea for that. It's like somebody has to sit at home and write three variations of a riff and then they got to put it in the Dropbox and then I got to download it in Dropbox and be like, do I like this? And they got to send it to four other people and then they got to add to it. So writing when you're not in the same room as each other for us, maybe not for every band, but for us has been very challenging, but thankfully we've kind of been able to get through that. So I think especially coming into this year, I had extremely high hopes for the band. I was really kind of feeling stagnated and then part of recovery for me. And I feel like for a lot of people from going through stressful situations is like, you have to stay busy. So I don't really have time to be sad because I'm like constantly doing photo shoots or doing whatever I can to try to extend my reach. That way I can be like, hey, like if you like this and like you should check out the music that I make because I put my heart and soul into it. Um, and so, yeah, so this year has been like, we're going to put out an album, we're putting out an EP, we've got four music videos, we just flew everybody in to do a band shoot, we have like potentially two headlining shows and maybe a tour, so it's just like grind, 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 repeat, and I think that that's kind of what you have to do with like a smaller band. And you got a new drummer too. <laughs> <laughs> to stay relevant. We do, oh my god, I love cameras! Yeah, so, our last drummer, Ben, uh phenomenal we're still very close friends with him he runs knuckleheads inc and that's the uh we're not signed to a label we're indie but we're releasing it under his like production company um and he was really integral to the writing of the album that we're about to put out and he's really great but uh he has this other band called cutthroat and then another one called matriarch so i think juggling multiple projects was becoming uh difficult and um what we definitely needed was somebody who is like all in to fate destroyed because all of us are all in to fate destroyed so i think that 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 decision was great and it was crazy because we met so we put out an audition for drummers and we got like way more responses than i thought we we're going to which of course is amazing um and even though cameron lived far away his he was just so eager to do it and his like chops were great his skills were great and i was like you know how serious are you about moving out to los angeles and now he's moving here in july so oh my God. <laughs> yeah so I mean he's all in he's like I'm gonna move across the country for this unsigned band and we're gonna like do this but I think we're actually gonna do it so I'm excited that's amazing though like he's willing to put in that effort and he's like you know I'm gonna even move there you know what we're gonna do this and you guys are I, are I doing you guys are doing it like you guys are like amazing like honestly you just you're releasing you're just constantly staying busy and that's I think a lot of people that are in the music industry have an issue with staying busy especially with everything kind of just going to like social media um especially with last year um uh, virtual things uh so what's that kind of been like uh you know with marketing yourself in the social media platforms it's like Instagram hard. yeah huh. it's been really hard because how do you make content, right? Like, so what do people like to see with bands? They want to see behind the scenes. They want to see what it's like to sit Absolutely. with you backstage. They want to see what it looks like when you're filming your music video. They want to see what it looks like when you guys are out to dinner together, being silly together. People don't want the branded, curated BS. They want to see who the people are that are making the music. Of course, like, you want to see the photo shoots and the band yeah. shoots and the whatever, but, like, you can get that anywhere. I think what makes people want to follow a band or relate to a band or care about a band or become part of a band's like fans is to really understand and have a connection with the band as a whole. And I think that marketing without being able to do any of those things was extremely difficult. We put out a lockdown video called Crave um, and it actually is doing better numbers wise than pretty much anything else we've put out ever, which is great because I love that song. It's actually one of my favorites. And what was fun about it is, like, we were like, we have to get this song out. I'm not going to go an entire year without putting out any music. So what do we do? So we each, with a cell phone, filmed our own parts in our own cities, in our own states, and, like, blended it all together. And it worked out so great. And I think that people really responded to that because, you know, they were like, the hell, like, this band is still, like, trying to put out music videos. And um, the, the music videos we're about to put out also were shot the same way, except they were shot professionally on green screens and... We all filmed some of us in different states, definitely different days. Um, and we're blending it all together because it's like, this is the only way that we can kind of simulate that. So 
it's been hard. 2019, I really was not busy, or 2020, I really was not busy enough. I feel like we, you know, our last show, I think, was January 2020. We played uh, the Juke Joint at NAMM, and it was, like, our biggest show to date, and it was amazing. And uh, and since, like, it took a while to kind of, like, dust ourselves off and, like, readjust to the new normal. But, yeah, I think that the opportunity is definitely there. It's just hard without being able to put out content, you know? I feel it. <laughs> but, you know, you don't be hard on yourself. Last year was rough for everybody. So I feel like just taking care of yourself, your mental health was like priority number one, especially since had, it's not yeah. anything we've had to deal with. It's like unprecedented. And then I think it really did help out with the digital age, though, as far as marketing. Like, I think now that everybody is online, you'll be able to use that to your advantage now a lot more than right. well, before. For sure. And there's pros and cons, though, right? Because now yeah. the issue is, is that the market is so saturated. You know, now it's like people were stuck at home and now, you know, everybody has access to make music. And I think standing out is a little more difficult these days than maybe it once was. But at the same time, like, it makes me unbelievably happy to see so many people out there, like, trying to pursue their dreams and, like, trying to put bands together. We are definitely not the kind of band that's like, oh, these other bands are, like, trying to, like, we're all trying to do the same thing. And I hella respect the hustle and really respect the grind and think that, like, you know, I'd like to see more women female front to metal, or I know that that's a big oh, yeah. and we shouldn't say it. But I do want more women to feel confident enough to step up and make metal if that's what they want to do. You know, I, I would love that. I love that you mentioned that because I was going to ask you if you could give some advice to any young women that would be interested in, you know, singing just in the music industry in general, especially metal. I mean, you just don't see a lot of women fronted metal uh, bands or anything like that. And it's just, it's, it's difficult. I mean, yeah, men can be a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can. <laughs> I don't want to say anything um, rude because not everybody's like yeah, that. But... No. Yeah, I mean, it is like that. And and the thing is, is like you just have to be prepared for those naysayers. You have to be prepared to not be taken seriously. And that isn't fair. And I'm not going to say that it's fair because it's not fair. But it's the truth. You know, you have to be strong enough to understand that, like, people are not going to take you seriously and people are going to be like, oh, that's cute. You do metal. And then, like, the best and sweetest revenge is when you get on stage and people are just like, oh, that came out of that mouth. And I'm like, yeah, bro, you don't want this smoke. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, in truth, in truth, it's all about confidence and about understanding that, like, you're not going to please everyone. And it doesn't matter if people are trying to put you in some stupid box of, like, oh, you're female funny metal. Like, you know, you can still, let me just have to walk in my door for just a second. Uh, you can still make music and still make metal and still be a woman and still be profound in that and still, you know, move towards that, I think. What's up? <laughs> uh, so is there any uh, advice that you have received in the past that's kind of like really helped you as far as like getting through music and things like that? So I know like people are always looking for advice, uh, especially the music industry. It's just, it's not always... It's always nice to, you know, get feedback from other musicians. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think I think a lot of the advice is pretty universal, right? Which is, like, you have to, number one, believe in yourself. And then, for sure, I think that's something that a lot of vocalists miss out on is that you have to remember that your voice is also an instrument and you have to take care of it. So I think that that gets missed a lot. You know, I before I record, before I play, I'm always trying to make sure that I'm doing like really sound vocal warm-ups and trying to take care of my voice and listen to it. Um, and I think also like practice makes perfect. It can be weird to sit in your own house or in your car or in any other place and like try to work on those guttural vocals, especially if you're like living with roommates or whatever. I mean, thankfully I live alone, but find the time to practice because just like a guitar player, you've got to get that muscle memory down so that way your voice is dependable and you know as soon as you get on stage your vocals are going to come out exactly as, you, as they're supposed to come out exactly as they have come out before so i also want to talk a little bit more about like future uh, songs like anything in the works for fate destroyed i know that you mentioned that you're doing a lot of songs and everything like that i just want to talk more about yeah. fate destroyed right now i we got past the advice part let's talk about fate destroyed yeah. what, are you guys, what are you guys doing uh let's hear all about so it we're Oh, I'm so excited to tell you. So um, we are working on an EP, which is like our whole new sound. Um, I'm actually doing my first song with a feature artist. His name is Jason Alessi. You can find him on SoundCloud. Um, and we're sort of stepping out of the boxes and confines of like the general metal core sound. Like we're still going to do metal. I'm still going to scream. There's still going to be gnarly breakdowns. There's still going to be all kinds of that kind of stuff. But 
I think what we're trying to do is sort of set ourselves apart from the existing genre and try new things. So um, I'm working with a couple of different producers to get uh, some production done for us, which is going to be totally different than what we've done before. And I think people are going to be really shocked. Oh, and we're doing our first slam song. I've never done a song with like straight guttural vocals, but we're going to like slow it down and bring the ultra heavy and like really try to do something really crazy. So I'm super excited about our EP. That's going to come in fall of this year. Oh. Um, Okay. Yeah, so we'll be looking out September. for it in fall, September, September. specifically. <laughs> September specifically. So, or end of August. So, um, in terms of the album that's going to come out, what's weird about the album is that most of it was written in 2018 and 2019. So, um, the music that's on it is sort of newer, right? So, it's more in line with the traditional Fate Destroyed sound. It's more. It's going to be more like what you hear on our Spotify or anywhere that you listen to us. Um, and you know what? Honestly, I'm really excited about that too because I think it's all been a growing process, right? If you listen from the beginning to Break Free and you listen and progress through this album, you'll definitely hear an evolution of sound and you can hear us grow as artists, which I think, you know, I think in a way I'm really happy that we didn't like completely blow up in our adolescent stage, right? Because we're like in that awkward stage where we're like trying to understand how our legs work and we got acne and like shit is weird. Oh, sorry, stuff is weird. Okay, you're <laughs> no, you're totally fine. You oh, can yeah. swear. Uh, we're cool with that. Sick. I mean, we're, it's weird. We're you're like bit, trying so. to find <laughs> you're like trying to find your footing right and so um I'm just glad that like I'm glad that there's a process where we get to like kind of do this and that the people who are listening to us now I think are going to stick with us hopefully and then they're going to be like oh man I listen to Beta Story when they tell me like this and they're like oh I remember their first album and stuff so, so yeah so that's really what's coming up in the next couple months and I'm really excited about it so yeah you guys already got a following, so you guys are just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's exactly what we want to say. Especially since, <laughs> yeah, like we so said. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so we're playing, I mean, no, you're totally fine. So we're going to be, we're doing two big festivals. I can't say what they are yet because they haven't made the announcements yet, but Aww. we're doing two big festivals. Um, They're on the East Coast. And East Coast? We, I think we're, yeah. I think we're going to do a... Uh, what we're trying to venues permitting of course still a pandemic still not everything at 100 percent capacity but hopefully by september things will be more open so we're looking to uh tour on the way there and back that way we can at least hit the southern states venues permitting and that'll be our first national tour um and so that's really exciting so i mean there's really a lot in the works and you know again like you said it's all just about staying busy and staying on the grind and you know it's easy to let shit slip when you are like us and have nine to five like some of our members have kids. Most of them are in their, you know, late 20s, early 30s. And so it can be difficult, but, like, you have to be driven and you have to be self-motivated and you have to be prepared to put in the work to make it work, you know? No, absolutely. And then, uh, yeah, I won't take up too much more of your time, I promise. No, um, it's but... okay. I love your shirt. Where can I buy one? Can you oh, my one? gosh. Uh, yeah, actually, yes, I had to tie it. But... Um, yeah, I would just show it. I would just show oh, it. Uh, the back. I should probably show that. Okay, can I get it on there? Oh, oh, come on. Oh, that's uh, it. Ah, there we go. There's the boots. There we also have like little tiny decals too. They're really cute, the little boot prints. I actually don't have any of those, but that t-shirt's <sighs> cool though. I like it. Yeah. We just put out we just put out our first merch and like the response was crazy because we've been a band for like three yeah. years and we've never ever had merch out. And I think part of that, and I'm not dogging how any other bands do it. I think part of it is just like I don't I didn't want to put out a song and then be like, buy my merch. It's like, you don't even know us yet. Like, you don't know what we sound like. How can you, you know what I mean? Like, how can I ask for support and ask for fandom when like, we have like four songs out, you know, I just felt like that was weird. So now that like the album's almost done and now that we've been established for a while and now all that kind of stuff and we put it out and it, and it seemed like that actually worked because people were like, holy shit, finally you put out merch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I think people are just like the buildup of it. They're like, okay, she doesn't have any merch. Uh, you know, we've been waiting for like years now. Oh, she did it. She did it. Oh my gosh. Let's go get it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting to have merch. And then like, I don't know how I'm going to, because one of the, one of the prints actually has my face on it. Like you can't really tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell I know. my face because it's my face, but <laughs> like you can't really tell. <laughs> and I'm just like, and I'm just like, bro, what am I going to do when I show up to a show and like, where Everybody has my your face? face. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like the first time anyone ever sang my lyrics back to me that was like that was a really special moment we were playing a show in OC and it was a packed house and I was singing Break Free and I look in the crowd and there's like the whole front row is like singing the 
singing the words back to me and it just like made my eyes tear up i was like oh my god like this is intense this is so insane and it was really special so i hope to replicate more of those moments in the coming years and i hope to like be involved in that and have those feelings again for sure <laughs> i think you'll be really surprised i think a lot of people have been paying attention to you <laughs> Oh, thank you. I'm <laughs> not just saying that. Oh my gosh. So you're so sweet, by the way. Uh <laughs> it's funny. It's you know what's actually funny? This one time. So I when I toured with my last band Kuza, um, we were at it was like a couple shows where this happened where we'd do like the meet and greets after we would play and people would come to like the merch table. People were always like, You're so much nicer than I thought you'd be. And I'm like, Do I seem like a total bitch online? Like no. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> no you're just like very pretty so I just think people just expect you to like be not nice but that's it's a stereotype I hope we just get rid of entirely uh, because you know there's yeah, a lot of cute girls can be nice exactly you're absolutely very nice very polite actually How I can't you? say anything. um so did you have any uh you know messages for your fans anything you'd like to tell them uh new merch on the way I know you've got yeah, three different so prints gonna... that I know of I think Rebecca, I have a fourth different print. Thank you so much to everybody who's taken the time to stream our music. Every single share matters. Like, I can't explain to you how much a zero dollar cross share helps us. It helps us in our reach. It helps us reach new people. Um, but yeah, so we'll be on the lookout for our album. It's called Within These Walls. It's coming out in fall. We've got three new music videos dropping. We're working on a fourth music video. Our next EP will be out in fall. So. Yeah, so just thank you to everyone who's taking the time and giving us a chance, and we really appreciate all the feedback, both positive and negative, because that helps us grow as artists, and we hope everybody is staying busy and staying healthy, and we miss you guys a lot. And one day, we will get to play shows again. Exactly. Yes, we will. Yeah, thankfully. Well, actually, I, don't, I know California has been kind of, like, strict as far as, like, quarantine. We're just starting to open up, I think, like, in around May uh, for the yeah. shows, but we'll see, because they've been, like, canceling a lot of events that they've, you know, started. So we'll just I know fingers crossed. <laughs> I need to play a show before I go crazy. Seriously. <laughs> I haven't go, played a show in over a year. Show. It's so dumb. Or even go to a show. I will I will gladly take going to a show at this point. Anything that gets me in front of an audience or in front of some damn live music. <laughs> like I'm gonna open mic, I don't care. No. I'm no. going to karaoke tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to karaoke. I have to. <laughs> it's the closest I have. Closest I can get to play a show. <laughs> Well, show withdrawals are real though uh i can't imagine yeah. what it's got to be like playing them too you know having all that energy and then you know just being able to like get your art out there and write the things that you feel about and i can hear it in your music that you don't just write to write so no i yeah really they all mean stuff i feel you know and it's funny because like i feel like as, as an artist at some point you like start to welcome shitty things happening in your life because you're like damn because not that I welcome it, but no. anytime something really shitty happens in my life, I'm like, man, this is going to be great inspiration for a song. Like, yeah, there you go. Spin it. Use that to your advantage. <laughs> you got to use it to your advantage, right? This sucks. You know what? I'm going to make a song that's going to get a million plays from this poor shit that just happened. So, yeah. You're going to do it. <laughs> I will be waiting to see that. And hopefully we'll get to interview again and be like, hey, got that million views. Yeah. <laughs> That would be so sick. I'm. We're gonna do it. This is. Gonna, I'm telling you, this is gonna be our year. Don't sleep on us, because this year we are changing the game for us. Anyway, I'm not going to change it for anybody else. Everybody else can keep doing what you're doing, but we are gonna change the game for ourselves for sure. And then, uh, was there anything uh, that you wanted to like add uh, that I might have missed or anything like that? Oh, that's it. I think I got <laughs> everything. I think I got everything. I talk a lot. I talk when I'm nervous. I just I talk a lot. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Try not to. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, touch base. The name on the album again, uh, once more. Within okay. these walls. Within these walls. Okay, the so we need to be looking for the within e these walls. And then the EP that's coming out is called Two Tone Heart. Two Tone Heart. All right, perfect. Oh, 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 We're gonna be looking okay. for all this. More stuff to jam out to. <laughs> it's gonna be sick. The new EP is gonna it's gonna go hard. It's gonna go real hard. I'm excited. We already going pretty hard, but. I'm excited to see what you do. Oh my God. And we're going to so definitely, nice. definitely be looking out for that. And I, okay. I, guess I won't take up any more of your time. I know that you've been really busy and everything like that. But it was oh, wonderful no, it was talking so to you today. I felt so bad that I missed that on Thursday. But it was no, we were able to wake up today. you're good. I know. Like, I pop on social media every once in a while because I work at a computer. So 
I saw that you have like doing photo shoots, you're doing like videos, you're doing like interviews, you're just a busy gal. So it's understandable. All righty, well, I'm gonna let you go, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Absolutely. And you have a wonderful rest of your week and have a safe weekend. You too. Enjoy. You. Be safe. Okay. I will. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.